What's up, City Hope? How we doing this morning? Come on, how many is ready to give God some praise today? Come on. Come on, sing this out. Now the darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. All creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. Come on. We will not be
church singing. You wouldn't let me stay captain. You couldn't stand to see my change. So you came to be my rescue. To part the waters in my You are my deliverance from day to night, from dark to light. Jesus, you show me freedom is. You call my name. You broke my shame. You are.
at your name still Call the sea is still The rage in me is still Every way At your name Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Whoa. We call these bones to live. We call these lungs to sing once again.
listen, I don't know what kind of year you've had, what 2018 was like for you, good, bad, ugly, but I do know that right now in this moment, when the presence of God is here and we're singing and declaring the name of Jesus, that things can change, that the atmosphere and the temperature of your situation can change for the better. Do you believe that? That 2019 can be different, stronger, better, more spirit-filled than 2018 was? I believe that and I believe that God has a new season that he's sending us into as a church, as a people of God, and we wanna step into that with you. We wanna step into that. We believe that God wants to minister to you more than ever before in 2019, and he has a really special new thing for you. Amen, amen. You guys sound awesome. Why don't you go ahead and take your seats. Good morning, City Hope Church. It is so good to be in the house of God right, right here on the last Sunday of 2018. And I trust that you and your, fam your families had an incredible Christmas holiday. I know I did. I was able to just pause and just be with family, and boy, it just was nice, right? Well, good morning. I'm Vanessa Fridge, and I am the pastor here at the Malvis campus. And, and there are many of you sitting in here today for the very first time. And I just want to welcome you and say we are so honored that you've chosen to be with us today. There is a Connect card in the seat back in front of you, and I want to just encourage you to go ahead and just fill that out. Take a moment to just fill it out right now. And then after service is over, bring it to a place called The Square, just right in the middle of the commons. We just simply want to connect with you, and we have a gift waiting on you to just say thank you for being with us today. So City Hope family, can you help me welcome all of our first time guests this morning? <clears throat> well, many of you had the opportunity last weekend to experience Christmas at City Hope. And, and, and I don't know about you, but I think you would agree with me in saying that it was the best Christmas at City Hope to date. And uh, yeah, go ahead, let's, let's celebrate that. That's incredible. But a large reason why it was so incredible was because we had 500 volunteers that, that put time into it, from creative to worship, production, to, to guest services and, and, and volunteers in Kid City. And you know, that is something to celebrate there too. Um, we're super excited. And, and let me just assure you that if you're not currently on a serve team, there's room for you. Let me just say that there is no joy quite like the joy of serving other people. So I wanna invite you to go ahead and jump on board in 2019 and, and, and join the team. We have next class for you next, next weekend on January the 6th. So I encourage you to attend. Well guys, as I reflect on, on 2018, it's super, it's just super awesome what God did through City Hope Church in 2018. Not only were you faithful in, in giving your time to serve the house, but you are faithful stewards to give financially. And man, there's so much ministry and so many people that were reached because of your faithfulness and your generosity in 2018. And I'm just, I'm, I'm firmly believing that 2019 is gonna be even better, but I wanna finish 2018 strong. So can you help me do that? Let's, let's just remember to be faithful stewards. It's so, so incredible what God has in store for us. Well, today we have the opportunity and the privilege to hear from, from Pastor Jerry Taylor. So I want you to go ahead and get out your devices and your Bibles, and let's get ready to be encouraged for 2019. Hey guys, how you doing? It's good to see you, and I'm having some technical difficulties right here. So anyway, 
Hope you had a great Christmas. Yes, sir. Okay, that didn't work. So you're wondering if I'm going to get my device straightened out here. Uh, it really got all messed up here. Uh, so here we go. Let's try this one. Let's see if this works. Oh, look. We're almost there. There we are. Okay. Sorry about that. I want to welcome all the campuses, Mobile, Foley, Baymanette, all the guys at the correctional facility. Thank you for being part of our last weekend in 2018. Can you believe how time has flown this year? It's just amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? Right? All the old people said yes. All the young people have no idea what I'm talking about. As Daddy always said, time flies. And now I know what that means, okay? It does. It just, it's amazing that we're facing a new year. And, you know, we had a wonderful Christmas with our family and food and family and food and more food and family. And I got all kinds of different uh, texts and things from pastors and colleagues all over the globe. Uh, and uh, a pastor from Uganda sent me this. And this was probably the highlight of our family uh, over Christmas. Uh, I think we laughed till we cried. So I want to share this with you. Uh. I, I want to, I want to, I want to say you, uh, I want to say you, Nini. A happy Christmas. I want to say you, uh, a, a, a happy, a happy, a happy birthday, a, a Jesus, a Jesus. Uh, I want to say you, uh, a happy crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, I want to, I want, I want to sing for you, and have a have dance, have a have dance. I want to sing for you, have a have dance. Yeah, yeah, Christmas, and a uh, happy new year. Have a have dance, have a have dance, have a have dance. Es para un oso, have a have dance, have a have dance. Navi Navi dance Navi Navi dance is paranoso Navi Navi dance I wonder we so a merry Christmas I wonder we so a merry Christmas I wonder we so a merry Christmas and and I wanna get in it Hey I do it It's a good night I wanna get in it the more we watched it, the more we cried. <laughs> Have you ever had a device? from an iPhone, a thermostat, a th even a set of scales that something was wrong with it and you sent it back to the manufacturer or the factory and when it comes back it's been calibrated. Well, the word calibrate, one of the definitions is to return to the factory's original specifications or the manufacturer's specifications or to return to normal, or to be reset. I believe God wants to reset, reset all of us to his factory original specifications. I think the factory is heaven. I think God is the designer and the architect and has an original design and purpose for every one of us. The psalmist, he said it so well in Psalms 139, 14, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained, the days that are set for my life. For written in your book, that word in the Hebrew is blueprint, written in your blueprint book before one of them came to pass. So you and I are God's design. God's determined for us to fulfill our original purpose. And, and, and but let's just be honest, I will. I, just like you, I'm constantly battling distractions to the point where sometimes 
the passion for God seems to have dwindled away. Sometimes life just wears you down where just serving the Lord is just another appointment we keep or one of those things that we have to do. And it happens to all of us. We keep going and going, and before we realize it, we just don't seem to be as effective as we used to be. Or maybe we've simply grown dull. You know, Abraham Lincoln said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax. Now, for many of us, that's like oh, four hours, that's a waste, I'll do it in two minutes. But Lincoln was a skilled woodsman and he knew two facts very well. He knew that a dull ax makes for far more work and he knew that a dull ax can be more dangerous than a sharp ax, sharpened ax. So Lincoln knew that the right tools properly cared for made hard work more successful and maybe he even read Solomon's wisdom on this. Because in Ecclesiastes 10.10, he says, if the ax is dull and he does not sharpen its edge, then he must exert more strength, but wisdom to sharpen the ax helps him succeed with less effort. The wisdom he's talking about here is taking the required time to sit down with a file and some oil and put a sharp edge on your ax. And every believer, every pastor, every staff member, every person, we lose that sharpness from time to time, and it needs to be sharpened or reset. And the way you do that is much the way you sharpen the edge of an ax. You stop what you're doing, and you get really specific with a plan, and you carefully start applying the right tools. At the beginning of every year at City Hope, we declare fast. Declaring a spiritual fast is a means of interrupting the distractions, and the dull routines of life. Fasting is taking the time to reset, prepare your way to accomplish more through and by the power of the Holy Spirit than just through your limited strength. Prayer and fasting work together like the tools to sharpen an ax. I, I think the file is the fasting because it files down that soulish rim. And I, I think the oil is the prayer. Let, let me give you a, a good definition of fasting. Fasting is the deliberate absence from some form of physical gratification for a period of time in order to achieve a greater spiritual goal. So fasting calls us to renounce the natural in order to invoke the spiritual. When you fast, you're saying no to yourself. And that's in the place where you can hear God in, in time of need or in time of a crisis. So to understand the impact of fasting, you need to understand the reason behind it. So let me, let me share that with you. God created Adam out of the dust of the earth. He wasn't a living being until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He became a living being. So therefore, listen, your ultimate value is not in your body, but in your soul. See, your non-material part of you is in God's image. Your body is not in God's image. It's the non-material part. What many of us do, though, is we feed the body. And sometimes we overfeed the body. Sometimes we stuff the body. Can I get a witness in the house? Fourteen people have overstuffed this time. That's it. That's great. We're doing better. But when we fast, we give, we, we, we give the soul higher priority than the body. In fasting, I'm asking God to feed my soul. Fasting teaches us to give up a craving of the body because we have a different need of the soul. The prophet Isaiah, he said the purpose of fasting is to make our, your voice heard on high. How many of you'd like for your voice to be heard by God? Yeah. When you fast with the proper motivation, your voice is heard in heaven, and that's when you come into God's presence. This message is entitled Hunger versus Hunger. You'll see what I mean as I go on. But you, if you think about the efforts we make to eat when we're hungry, I mean, some of us, when we're hungry, we're like a bear. You know, it's like you got to feed them to, you know. Some of us will change our schedule. We'll go through a drive through and eat things we shouldn't eat. We'll, we'll, we'll even make a meeting at lunch so that we can, you know, not wait for the meeting and have it when we're a bear. When you fast, you're becoming desperate to satisfy a need in your soul through the spiritual. We desperately want to satisfy our natural hunger, but we're spiritual beings, and fasting helps us acknowledge and feed our spiritual nature. Isaiah also said that fasting is a time for a man to humble himself. And, it's, and it, 
the, the humbling is to be able to say no to something you crave naturally. And then you bow before God, admit there's a spiritual need in your life. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He prayed that the followers of Christ would be sanctified, sanctified and preserved in the spirit, soul, and body. The order here is very important. You have heard, your world says most of the time, you may have even caught and said it this way, body, soul, and spirit. That's out of order. Because you're not made up of body, soul, and spirit, but spirit, soul, and body. You were created, in other words, let me say it this way, you were created to live from the inside out and not the outside in. And if you look at yourself as a body that happens to house a soul and a spirit, then you live for the body first. And that's what a lot of us do. We live for the body first. But if you understand you are a spirit that possesses a soul and lives in a body, then you're going to live for the spirit. Because you see, your spirit is the part that enables you to communicate with God's spirit. And that makes you have spirit awareness. There is a spiritual world. And we need spirit awareness of what's going on in that spiritual world, not just what's going on in the natural. Your soul enables you to communicate with yourself. Self-awareness. There are sometimes, if the spirit isn't allowing my soul to have self, self-awareness, I just miss that I have a problem with this, or I think like this, or I act like that. Your body then enables you to communicate your way with your environment, with others, paying attention to others. We are designed to live from the spirit out to the body. And the reason so many people have messed up bodies is because they have a messed up soul. And the reason they have a messed up soul is because their spirits are not under the original design of the factory, of the manufacturer, to be connected to God's Holy Spirit. But here's what God says, and I'm going to put it in my terms, my words. When we come to God in fasting and prayer, expecting him to hear our voice, he will warm up your spirit, heat up your spirit, which inflames your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And your will is your desire. And sometimes our desire is flat, it's dormant, it has no flame. But when I come to God in prayer and fasting, he's, he's going to hear my voice. He's going to heat up my spirit, inflame my soul. And then it breaks through to my body. And here's the end result. It results in godly living. I'm, I'm operating in the factory setting. I've been calibrated. So, and, and that sounds great, but understand, it can only happen when you come into God's presence, when you bow before him in, him in humility allowing him to break you. Now, I know you're saying, wait a minute, you're talking about giving up food. I'm not in favor of that. Now you want to be broke. Now you're saying I need to be broken. I don't even want to talk about that. To be broken, here's what it means. To be broken means to be stripped of your self-sufficiency. At the beginning of every new year, most of us make all kinds of resolutions, which is really a way of saying to God, I can do this by myself. And how many times have we had the same resolution year after year after year? God wants you to say, I can't do this. I've tried. I can't do this without your help. And here's the bottom line. The bottom line is we need our flesh out of the way to reset in order to focus on the spirit. And fasting is a tangible way of demonstrating to God that we're setting aside the flesh in order to deal with my spirit. So again, City Hope Church, we're calling a corporate fast, not a total fast, a partial fast. Total fast is just water. A partial fast, and we're using this partial fast, we call it a Daniel fast. It's for 21 days. It'll begin on January the 7th. It means no meats and no sweets and no bread and no caffeine, only water, no Cokes and Diet Cokes and just just water. And, and, And the majority, I believe, Typically, the majority of the City Hill family will participate. But, but listen, I want you to really catch this. I want you to understand it's a matter of, if, if I motivate you to do it and, and to go into it, okay. But it has to be a matter of conviction between you and God. And here's why. The most important element in fasting is prayer. If you're fasting and not praying, you're just on a diet. There's a lot of those. You may benefit physically a little bit, but not spiritually. So what's going to motivate you to make this, this, this 
this agreement with God, this conviction with God, and consecrate yourself for 21 days. Well, how badly do you want answers to your situation? Because everyone listening to me, you have a different situation. From health to family to a marriage to finding, I mean, everybody's got a different, how badly do you want an answer to that? Or how much do you want to break a destructive habit? How many times have we set a New Year's resolution because it's a habit we want to break and it lasts just a few days and here we go, we do it again. Wouldn't you like to break that habit? Or how badly do you want to save your marriage? Or, or, or improve your marriage? Or know how to raise your children? Or increase your capacity at work, your job, your fine, and on and on and on. Do you want it bad enough to give up some food for a period of time? That's between you and God. But when you come before God with prayer and fasting to start the new year, understand, I want you to see this spiritually. Without the spiritual connection, this thing is just a diet. Paul told us in Ephesians, in chapter 1 and in chapter 2, that we've been given all spiritual resources of God in Christ Jesus. And he says these resources, these blessings, are located in heavenly places, which is where we as believers have been seated by the virtue of our position in Christ as a believer. But many believers are in heavenly places with Christ, but they don't know where the chair is. They don't know where to be seated. Why? Because the flesh, the body is so dominant, and so sometimes we need to weaken the flesh. We need to reset so the Holy Spirit can break through in our lives. When you fast, listen, you're, you're going to feel weak. But if you're praying during the fast, you become strong in the Lord's strength. When you're praying, it's when you're calling out with your voice, and the Lord's going to answer you. Yeah, but I've called out to God about this for years and years. Yeah, but have you called out to God in a fast? See, fasting makes your voice heard on high. And, and remember, God wants his promises. He wants he, all of his promises to come to pass that he has given us in the factory. And you, in this praying, you're seating yourself in the chair for the spiritual resources. So let me illustrate it this way. Since 1937, airplanes have been pressurized so they can fly above the clouds. Before that, they had to fly low to stay in the atmosphere. As soon, listen, as soon as you start praying and fasting, Satan is coming to line up at cloud level. And he's going to try and keep you below the clouds so you don't reach the throne of God and sit down in that seat to receive blessings and resources and revelation and insight from God. He wants to keep you from hearing God's direction for your life. If you pray and fast by the mercy of God, you're going to break through the clouds because God is going to pressurize your soul so you can breathe in those heavenly places where God is blessing you and where God wants to empower you. So what am I saying? I'm saying it's time to get the flesh under control so you're not under control of the flesh. The problem for many of us today is we're dull. And so we work harder. We work harder spiritually. We think we've got all these things we have to do, and we produce less when we work harder. Produce less in our lives, in our homes, in our marriages, in our income, in our commitments. We all need to reset our prayer life. We all need to reset, reset ministry in our life. We all need to reset church life, married life, financial life. And when we set aside time for prayer and fasting, you're gonna see greater results. Now, it's just, just be honest. We don't know what our new year holds for us. Sometimes in a new year, you're faced with something so mammoth, you don't know how to accomplish it. You don't know what to do, how it's going to happen. What's going to happen? So let, let me give you some examples of this. There's a certain man named Nehemiah who worked in the palace of a king in Persia, 800 miles from Jerusalem, and 70 years after the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem and the temple and have the Jew, some of the Jews in captivity, there's a few people who live in Jerusalem, but they're, they're living there. There's no walls, no gates, no, there's no city, and they're living and moving along in the piles of rubble. They're not fulfilling their purpose. If your life is full of rubble and you're moving around and dodging and moving this and just getting by, that's, that's not God's purpose for you. So what did God do? He gave this guy, Nehemiah, a burden for the city of his people. This is his hometown. Nehemiah is a Jew. And he received the report about the condition of Jerusalem, and he's devastated. 
that is hometown. It's, it's leveled. It doesn't look like it's supposed to. There's no security, no identity with the walls and the gates. And in Nehemiah 1, 4, he said, when I heard these things, I sat down and wept. And for some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. He prayed and he fasted. He asked God to grant him favor with his boss, who is the king of Persia. And he said, and God gave the Bible says that God gave Nehemiah a dream to re rebuild the walls in the city and the gates of the city. It was a mammoth task. And only God could make it happen. And if you want a good read during a fast, it's the book of Nehemiah. Against all odds, against all the enemies of Israel, Nehemiah got the job finished. Nehemiah 6.15, so the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in the 52 days. When all the enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid, lost their self-confidence, but they came realized this work had been done with the help of our God. 52 days. So God not only made it happen for him, and he used him, but he empowered him and equipped him to do it in a ridiculously short amount of time. Why? You read the first chapter of Nehemiah. He sharpened his axe. He prayed. He fasted. He, he, he got along with God. And when he was able to do that, he's able to slice the enemy's threats and he's able to get the job done. He's more productive in a short amount of time. You may not be rebuilding a wall or gates of a city, but God has a purpose and he has a dream for your heart and he wants you to fulfill that. He wants you reset to fulfill your purpose and we all need to pray and fast, get his favor and his direction to full, fulfill the purpose in your life. And listen, you, you may have a new business idea. You may be starting a new career. You may be getting married next year and starting a whole new family. Maybe you're remarrying and going to have a blended family. Or, or maybe you're thinking and, and thinking, I should be adopting a troubled child or whatever, whatever. God's plan is for you to pray and fast. He will bring favor and direction and make it happen. And make it happen quicker than you can make it happen. You remember Queen Esther in the Old Testament? Her and her people, the, the Jews, were under threat of extermination by the hand of Na Haman. He manipulated the king to sign a decree for the Jews to be wiped off the earth. And so Esther, this young lady who's the queen, learned from her cousin Mordecai who adopted her and raised her. And, and through his influence, she called a fast for the Jews. But even those under her in the palace fasted. And what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good because they humbled themselves and they prayed and fasted. Their voice was heard by God. And then God moved immediately because they were going to die. He moved. The Jews were spared. Haman and his sons died on the, on the gallows intended for Mordecai and the Jews. They were saved. And there's another king in the Old Testament, Jehoshaphat. And, and, and we, we, we see in this text, we look at that he's just found out that he is surrounded. The whole, the whole city is surrounded by the enemies. And in 2 Chronicles 23, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed the fast for all of Judah. And the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Jehoshaphat called a corporate fast. The people were definitely motivated because the enemy's fixing to come in and overtake them. So they're motivated to seek God. When they humble themselves through prayer and fasting, they opened the door for God to come in. But he didn't just come in and deliver them. He also fought the battle for them. Here's his reply in verse 15. He said, hey, hey, listen, King Jehoshaphat, listen. All who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle's not yours, it's God's. L listen to me. Are you under attack? Well, no, I don't have enemies camped out around my house. Really? Is someone slandering you? Is someone threatening you? Is someone manipulating you at work? Is somebody doing some things that are not right? It's time to pray and fast. When it feels like the enemy's coming in like a flood, it's time to pray and fast. You're, you may be facing, you know, some type of surgery this year. It's time to pray and fast. You may have a negative report from a, about your body. It's time to pray and fast. You may have family members that serve in the military that are in a dangerous place, and they need protection to stay safe. It's time to pray and fast. And what about your children? And what about their protection and their future? Do you know that Ezra, in chapter 8, you can go in, that he, he called a fast for for, for protection of the children and for direction. He, he sought God for direction, the right way to lead the little ones. And what about oppression? What about depression that comes against you? We are the most depressed society, and so many believers are oppressed. And, 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 and Jesus said it like this. He said, listen, so 
there are times when nothing but prayer and fasting would drive out the source of oppression and depression in somebody's life. Nothing but prayer and fasting. Yes, demonic oppression is real, and if it's in your life, it's time to fast and pray. And Jesus began his earthly ministry with a 40-day fast in the wilderness, gave his followers authority over the power of the enemy. So God's chosen fast for his people who are called by his name is to set free those who are bound and oppressed. And by the way, the name Nehemiah means consoling breath of God. What did God breathe into Adam? And the name Mordecai means God enlightens, types and shadows of the Holy Spirit. So listen, here's what I'm saying. From Mordecai and from Nehemiah, the Holy Spirit knows when you need to fast. Maybe, maybe this is the time. The Holy Spirit led Jesus on his first fast. Maybe, maybe this is your first time. The Holy Spirit knows when you need to reset because you're dull. You see, you'll be dull a long time before you even know you're dull or you recognize it. The Holy Spirit knows it. And listen, please don't do this. Don't pass off his promptings to fast when everything's good. Well, this, this is good, but everything's going great in my family. No, 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 no. Because, see, the more you choose to fast and pray throughout the whole year, a meal here, a day there, then, then part of your life becomes more sensitive to the Spirit of God because now your spirit begins to hunger for the things of God just like your stomach hungers for food. Hunger versus hunger. When you engage in a time of prayer and fasting, you'll experience physical hunger and listen, it will fade a little t after a little time. You, you, I know it sounds crazy. You don't think you're going to die, but you won't die. You could eat cardboard and don't do that. That won't work. But, you know, you think you're going to die. But it typically fades a little bit. But as, as, as that hunger in the natural revs up and then starts to fade, your spiritual hunger starts to rise up. And it's only satisfied by the presence of God. And in the presence of God is where you get directions to be reset in life to fulfill your purpose. You know, sometimes you can pray for something and you don't see an answer right away. So if, if that's you, keep praying. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep praying. I remember as a kid hearing all my loved ones praying for my, my mother's dad. And I grew up as an adult thinking, he's never going to get saved. He'll never get saved. Yet the day came that he gave his heart to God. So don't, don't stop. Don't, don't stop. And, and see, your, your prayers are not ignored your prayers are not discarded they, they don't have an expiration date they don't have a shelf life the book of revelation refers to a bowl of incense collected in heaven the factory they're the prayers of the saints which leads us into daniel he's been praying and fasting for 21 days three weeks when the angel of the Lord appeared to him, explaining how his prayers have been heard in heaven since the first day, but the answer has been delayed. So listen to this, Daniel 10 and 12. Then he continued, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding. Listen, set your mind. Next week, I'm going to give you some very practical things about how to set your mind. That you set your mind to gain understanding, to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I've come to respond to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. This is a spiritual principality. This is one of the enemy's principalities. This is not a person in the natural. This is a spiritual principality. And then Michael, who's one of the angels, one of the chief princes, one of God's principalities, came to help me because I was detained there with this principality of Persia. Now I've come to explain to you, Daniel, what will happen to your people in the future, Revelation, and here for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Now, in the Bible, listen, there are three classifications of angels in, in, in the Bible. There's what's called a word angel, an answer angel. The angel who, the leader of this in heaven is Gabriel. He's the leader. He comes with a word. He comes with the answer. So he has the answer to Daniel, but he's hung up. He's held up in the spiritual realm by this principality. And then there are warring angels. So he's there 21 days. God sends the warring angel. Michael's the leader over the warring angels to help war against spiritual principalities so, so over Persia so God's answer couldn't get to Daniel who's living in Persia. And then there are worshiping angels. And Lucifer used to be the leader there, but he, he got kicked out and all, with a third of the angels of heaven. Now that void is only filled by God's people. That's who fills that void. But when you pray and fast in alignment with God's will, he hears you, and you can rest assured that you set something in motion in the spiritual realm, even if you're not able to discern it in the beginning. 
when you fast and pray, he gives you understanding and the Holy Spirit will lead you and empower you and bless you with God's answer. Here, here's what I'm trying to say. God hears the prayers of people. He hears the cries of people. Even when we do it when we're desperate, when we do it and we haven't done it in a while. See, when Israel was crying out in slavery, 430-something years, he pulls Moses aside and raises up a leader. I'm going to get him set free. God hears the cries, listen, of the unsaved who cry out. Not to be saved, they just cry out to God. He hears the cries of the abused, the oppressed, and even those who follow false gods, those who worship false gods. They're empty, they're void. That false god cannot fulfill them because there's only, only one god. You're created in his image, and that image is in the non-material part where there's a void there, and only the real spirit of God can fill it. And when they cry out, how miserable, what, God hears their cry. He hears the cry of an alcoholic that's stumbling home again. He hears the cry of a drug addict that's desperate to stop again. See, there has to be, listen, there has to be a called, consecrated time of fasting and prayer so we can connect to God the way we're made. So the city, Hope Families, we, we're, we're going to give up eating our normal way for 21 days to empower that connection, like sharpening an ax. It's a short time, produces a lasting effect. I could tell you story after story after story of 20 years of this. And out of 365 days, you take 21 days, that's not too long to take a break from your normal routine of eating so you can pray and eat a certain way to show God you want your flesh put down so you can have an encounter with your God. And I believe in 2019, God wants to establish who he is in your life again. I believe God wants to establish you afresh and anew. But I can tell you, I'm telling you, it, it will not happen until there's a time of prayer and fasting. There has to be the reset. There has to be that reset. And fasting gets you into that position. And in that position, you receive guidance, and you receive blessing, and you receive revelation. And then God begins to use you to reach others with his love and grace. So listen, prayer, please, please get this. Prayer and fasting is not a requirement. It's a choice. If you're a believer, you're still going to heaven. If you're a believer, it doesn't mean, if you don't fast, you put it at the back of the line or you gotta ride another bus. That's not what it means. It's a choice. Now, I know the Pharisees in the New Testament made it a law, but that's religion. And if religion's telling you to fast, then you, you, you might as well just call it a diet. It'll, it'll taste better. And three times in the book of John, actually chapter six, Jesus said, listen to this, and I'm, I'm finished. I tell you the truth. And then he gives us food that's eternal. He didn't give us uh, bread from heaven like he gave Moses and the Jews in the wilderness. He, he didn't give us manna for a day or a manna that's going to waste away, but manna that will stay. He, he, the bread of God that our Father offers, Jesus now offers himself as our bread. And here's what he said. He said, I am the bread that gives life. And I, if you come to my table, listen, and eat, you will never go hungry. Now, your flesh is going to come hungry again. Every four or five hours, some of you every hour. King flesh raises up, but he's saying here, you'll never go hungry. And then he says, you'll never go thirsty. Never hungry. What do you mean? When this becomes a lifestyle, whether it's a meal or a day or three weeks, when this becomes a lifestyle that I'm keeping my flesh at a lower level and I'm elevating my spirit and my spirit connects to God's spirit and then God's spirit tells my spirit how to help my soul in non-material things, in my mind, how to think and not be fearful, it, it, in my will, my desires. Now my desires start to line up with God. Before, that, my desires were my desires. Now that's God's desires. And then my emotions... Oh, my goodness. Some of you need to fast just to get your emotions under control. Because everything, every little wind that comes, every little this, that, you're all over the place. So he, he, Jesus is saying this. He's saying, listen, if you come to my table, I know you're going to rearrange your table, and that's you. I can't make you do that. But if you come to, during that time, if you come to my table, I'm going to give you bread, and you're never going to go hungry, and you're going to grow. You're going to be excited. L listen, I want to pray for you. 
And I know this fast changes things. If you've never done this, I encourage you to try it. Next week, I'm going to give you some incredible steps to how to help you through this because, really, you, you're, you're going to think you're going crazy. You know, you, you're going to smell food when there's no food around. You're going to have dreams of hamburgers, you, you know, and pizza. And, you know, you, 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 but, but I'm telling you, when you come here and there's no coffee smell in the commons, when you come here and you go into the green rooms or the, or the worship rooms and there's no donuts and coffee, no caffeine, oh, worship's going to be different. Preaching's going to be different. You're going to be different. But, but listen, don't come in here all stump, stooped over and drooling. As the Bible says, when you fast, you know, wash your face. Don't let anybody know. But let's do it. But make it a personal conviction between you and your God. And you watch what happens. I promise you. I've seen it for 20 years. It's amazing. People grow. People become strong. Marriages are healed. Finances, oh, I mean, it's just amazing what God does. Not during the fast. My, no, during the fast, you think you're dying. You know, it's like, ugh. And I promise you, I promise you, you'll see, you'll see a million commercials about food. So just don't even watch TV, you know. And then, and then your neighbor, they don't know you're in a fast. They're going to bring you a cake. And I, I, I've had people in the church bring me boxes of vanilla wafers during a fast. And I put the curse of the fleas of a thousand camels on them too. <laughs> Let's do this together. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that the entire family of City Hope desires to choose to set out on this journey of 21 days to seek you with our whole heart, soul, and mind. And Lord, let us see this as an opportunity not so much to look back, but to look forward. And in looking forward, let this be the prayer we pray. Let this be the prayer that we put on our mirror, that we, that we put in our device. Lord, where do you want me spiritually a year from now? Lord, what are the steps to get there? And Lord, how do I stay there? Lord, during this time of fasting and prayer, may we come to know you face to face and learn how to develop a constant spiritual hunger so that we know you that way, face to face, all the days of our life so that we can fulfill the settings that you've put inside of us, the purpose, the destiny on this earth to glorify your name. Amen.